Hello and welcome to Weekly Weird News brought to you by Cook the Bull in the post shoot apocalypse. I'm Ben and as always I'm hanging out with Mike. Hello. Claire. Hey. And Pete. Hello. This is episode 66 of Weird News. Execute Order 66. <laughs> some clone troopers really should come in here and shut Mike by now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not a full-blown Jedi. Yeah. Like, oh, so you admit it finally? <laughs> <laughs> Only when it suits you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Jedi, I'm a Jedi, I'm a Jedi Master. <laughs> Second clone troopers might turn up. <laughs> oh, I'm not a Jedi, really. I'm a Jedi. I'm only a Padawan. That's enough. You're youngling. <laughs> Master Skywalker. <laughs> anyway. Imagine if just sat with the young wing. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking joint in her mouth. <laughs> Master Yoda's oh, shit. Jedi's for yeah. life, not just for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Master <laughs> Spike sat there with the young wing smoking a joint. <laughs> it's like, Master Skywalker, what are we going to do? The voice is like, what? He's <laughs> gunned down by clones. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I leave my lightsaber? <laughs> <laughs> I've bought a dueling lightsaber. Have you? I have. How much? 79 quid reduced to 120. 79 reduced to 120? Reduced from 120. <laughs> so. Reduced from 120. If it's I, any good, I might get one. If I had a little, I had a little bonus, I thought, you know what, I'm going to spend money on anything useful. I'm going to indulge in my cows on this side and buy myself something completely fun. But anyway, this is weird news. It's a shit we found over the net this week that's made us sort of raise an eyebrow, maybe laugh, maybe get freaked out slightly, or maybe drive us into the depths of depression. Either way, it's called weird news and we should proceed. What's first then? South End United consider U turn over stand containing the name serial killer Rose West. Why would you do it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Look, it was written by Fred West, this article. <laughs> <laughs> they channeled him. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping it does explain. No, it's just one of the tags. It's not the author of the article. A shame. football club was... Oh, it's a shame that we couldn't channel the ghost of Fred West to write a newspaper article about it. No, mind, we should be channeling the ghost of Fred West at all. <laughs> <laughs> A football club has come under fire from fans after people. striking a sponsorship deal which has left one of its stands carrying the name of a notorious serial killer. South End United's agreement with local estate agents Gilbert and Rose means that one side of their ground is now known as the Gilbert and Rose West Stand. <laughs> <laughs> I see, so... Rose West mm. is one of the most infamous serial killers in British history, having played a part in the torture and murder of nine women between 1973 and 1987, along with her husband, Fred West. Women? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it children? No, it was uh, one or two children. I can't remember. One, definitely. Her own daughter. Mm. Her stepdaughter in 1971. Yeah, it was, it was women that Fred and her picked up. Yeah, we did a Christmas episode on it. Yeah, check, check it that out. out. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a cheery one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Christmas with the Wests, I think we call yeah. it. The club said it would be having discussions with the company to uh, come up with a different arrangement of words for the stand at Roots Hall. Pointing at the unfortunate name, one South End fan, Paul Napper, said, Only South End United could have a sponsor for the West Stand called Gilbert and Rose, inevitably leading to the Gilbert and Rose West Stand. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call it the Rose and Gilbert. West stand, don't you? However, a South End United spokesman said the National League Club was grateful for Gilbert and Rose's sponsorship of the stand. Yeah, you can't change the names, it's a company. That's it, I mean, they're palatable. You can't call it QB. G and R. G and R? Call it Gilbert G- and Rose. G and R stand. Uh, yeah, yeah. G and R West stand. Apparently, according to the um, South End United spokesman, they're a fantastic local estate agents and we look forward to working with them during this partnership. Which will include a number of community projects. But if you have G and R, then they think Guns and Roses are supposed to in the sun. <laughs> Might bring in more people. Yeah, that's it. Who's to know? Maybe. Rose West is currently in prison, having been convicted in 1995 of ten counts of murder. Her husband Fred died by suicide that same year. What? 
Do you reckon he was he did commit suicide or do you reckon he was killed? Yeah, I, I think he committed suicide. He knew what he was gonna get. Yeah. He knew that was his his life for the rest of his life, kind of thing. Yeah, so. he was a coward at the end of it. And they sexually taught you can beat people to death. They reckon he killed more. He killed more than her. They reckon they can attribute at least another three or four to him. The thing is, they were only convicted of ten. How many actually did they do? I think Fred was convicted of twelve. She was convicted of ten. But I bet I reckon they probably killed more. I think there's still some that haven't been found. Up there. there is, yeah, and there's some that can't be linked to them. But have the same MO as what Fred used to use, like the removal of kneecaps and knuckle bones and things inserted into the vagina. So yeah. Not nice people. Not good to have a stand named after. Not one, good to have a stand named no. after Rose West. No, it's unfortunate, <laughs> but you know, sometimes so, someone should have really looked at that and gone, oh, "Yeah, I bet you it was like a millennial who had no idea." Yeah. Who, oh, Rose. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, Gilbert yeah. and Rose West stand would be fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Rainwater everywhere on Earth contains cancer-causing forever chemicals to define. You know what, Mike? I got this for you because you always give me something like this. <laughs> and I saw this article and thought, you know what, fuck you. You're having that. <laughs> Even in the most remote parts of the world, the level of so-called forever chemicals in the atmosphere has become so high that rainwater is now unsafe to drink according to newly released water quality guidelines. We're bear, fucked, aren't bear, we? Bear that we in mind for the zombie way. apocalypse and we're sticking buckets on the roof. We can't drink the rainwater, it'll give us cancer. And all, all this rainwater is raining over our crops. Yeah. Yes, it is. And our animals and our houses and yep, our grass. on us. Us. And guideline values for PFAs in drinking water, surface waters and soils have been revised down dramatically due to greater understanding into their toxicity and the threats they pose to health and the natural world. So we're realising that it's actually worse than we first thought. It's been found in like, the most remote regions too. Yeah. That's the worst of it. Like, the Himalayas and stuff has mm-hmm. been found up there. Mm. Clouds go all around the world, don't they? I know, yeah, but in the, in the least, supposedly the least polluted areas, we're still getting this stuff in the rainwater. It's... Well, yeah, because the clouds are moving across, aren't they? I know, yeah, but you think you get higher concentrations where the, the cities are, where the major pollutants are, well, wouldn't yeah, it? because it goes from there, it gets carried away yeah, elsewhere. It's, it's all around the globe. It's tragic. Mm. It's killing us all, we're killing ourselves. Carry on, Mike. So really based on the latest US guidelines for PFOA in drinking water, rainwater everywhere will be judged unsafe to drink. Uh, PFOA is the cancer causing yep. perfluorotonic acid. Mm-hmm. Lovely. And where does that come from? All the shit we've been pumping into the air, all that lead, all those chemicals. No, yeah, it's no it's chemicals off like Teflon and things like that. Teflon pans. Is it? Yeah. And in plastics. These BPAs and that and BPAs what's in, that? in the plastics. Mm. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And Probably. obviously it's leaked into the the soil and that and the, the oceans and it's been picked up and it's in the rainwater now. It means we are truly fucked. Because this is, everything does break down one day for whatever reason. And we're collecting rainwater, we and know that's gonna kill us, not how much we boil it. Forever chemicals so they're never gonna go away. Not good. No. So like I say we come down to we're drinking rainwater, no matter how many times we boil it, that shit's in there. Yep. It's going to kill us one day. What about Alex Jones' water purification system? Nope. Doesn't matter. That's it. We're doomed. Doesn't matter. Has anyone seen Alex Jones this week? I was going to put an article in about Alex, but isn't, the case is still ongoing. I was going to say, hasn't, hasn't his case gone to court this week? He's been gone to court. Though, yeah. hmm? It's finished. It's finished. He's been fined 4.2 million. Mm. Whoa. Dollars, and the best of it was that his attorney sent the entire digital contents of Alex's phone to the yeah. prosecution attorney, and then then like, Alex was found to have lied to the court. <gasps> There's like his text messages there saying this and that, and everything he said the opposite of. <laughs> like, he just lied to the court. Useless. Who the fuck did he hire? <laughs> Cletus, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Alex is screwed. You know how much he was making on Infowars? $800,000 a day. Yeah. Really? Start yep. selling all that shit that he sells that doesn't do anything. Never. A 100% markup he was putting on. 
the second money gets involved, you can't trust anybody. So it boils down to people. It is. And yeah, so also, breaking news, rainwater is bad for you, don't drink it. It's in the drinking supply. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly, it's yeah. Rivers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right, moving on. m and worker living in fear, he's attacked and laughed at by seagulls every day walking nah. to work. <laughs> Aww. A 21-year-old man has shared his horror after being attacked by seagulls every day on his way to work. Taylor James from Lancashire walks the same route to his job as a customer assistant at Marks & Spencer and frequently encounters the angry birds. Taylor filmed the most recent attack on the 25th of July after a seagull began to follow him and the video has since gone viral on TikTok. TikTok? <laughs> uh, UAPs on the brain, haven't you, Claire? <laughs> TikToks, TikToks everywhere. Whilst recording the incident on his phone, the MS worker begins frantically running away from the bird who can be heard squawking at him. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Just before he can get away, the seagull begins to dive from him several times, narrowly missing his head. As he reveals in the short of a scenario happened most mornings, Taylor jokes that it is a hate crime as people point out the seagulls are laughing at him. Uh. What? He says, basically most mornings I'm walking on my way to work and I'll catch the train, I'll walk down past the back houses and feel some seagulls staring at me and <laughs> waiting for me to come. Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh. He says, I try to act calm but literally they start diving at me and that's when I start have to start running. Ah. As a gay boy who doesn't ever do sport, the running part is the worst bit. <laughs> do you think his mum's putting like fish in his pockets or something? Is that his lips? He's got fish lips, that's probably oh. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. He literally has a massive fear of seagulls now, he says, and yeah. his mum is petrified of anything that flies. Because they think them lips of his are a pair of slugs. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a still in the video. There's him. There's a seagull hovering above yeah, him. That's quite <laughs> and then it's it is. petrified as well. Well, yeah, and there's just the word help. Right on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it is. It, 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 they just after a couple of nice juicy slugs. No, from his, from his lips. That's quite funny. Sorry, mm. but it's funny. Yeah, hilarious. I like it. Either way, man gets attacked by seagulls repeatedly, and they say seagulls never forget. Or do. Well, that's elephants, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever. Seagulls, elephants, there's no difference. <laughs> <laughs> they never forget. About the same size. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So yeah. some of those seagulls down in Cornwall are about, sure. are about the size of a small elephant. Oh. All right. Next one then. The Elder Scrolls Four: Oblivion's AI had to be dumbed down to save the game. Yeah, this is mad. Gamers usually clown on the AI from the Elder Scrolls Four: Oblivion because the NPCs act in a rather dumb way. NPCs are non-playable characters. One that seems to go well beyond the bewilderment we'd expect from uneducated peasants living in a fictional medieval world, where all religions have real deities behind them. These NPCs aren't dumb in the regular NPC dumb kind of way either. It's almost as if they're being dumb in a cleverly thought-out manner. Turns out this isn't because they're poorly coded, because they were coded so well at some point, the devs had to perform a worldwide lobotomy to prevent them from taking over the world. <laughs> In the final version of the game, a specific NPC can accidentally fall off a bridge to his death without players even noticing. This bars players from ever getting to buy a house in the game. What the hell is this all about? That's a failed instance of an NPC making use of the Ragent AI, the revolutionary AI tech that Bethesda made for the game. Bethesda wanted the game to feel alive, and the best way to make that a reality was to create an AI system deep enough to equip every single NPC with their own lives, wants and needs. The devs originally boasted about the NPCs interacting with each other and doing realistic stuff like eating or having conversations. But they ended up mostly just talking total gibberish and taking hours to eat a single piece of fruit. <laughs> Were the devs at Bethesda lying or did they make a catastrophic coding mistake near the end of the development process? It turns out that these NPCs ended up that way out of necessity. The developers learned the wrong way that having NPCs with unique desires can result in some awesomely unpredictable events. 
Yes, it mostly results in NPCs going on, on a murderous rampage in the search for other NPCs who have booze in their inventory. <laughs> <laughs> inventory. Inventory, 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 same. You can say either. I'm with Mike. <laughs> inventory. As soon as the game begins, savages, not just the NPCs in our line of sight, but the NPCs from all around the world would begin either murdering each other or committing petty crimes who would end up with them getting killed by the accidentally realistic police. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. Yeah. The devs saw no other solution than to just dumb the NPCs the hell down. A small price to pay for the beautiful daddiest art that are the uh, NPC interactions we can witness in the final game. Crazy, isn't it? Never. I love it. So they must have probably had to do that then when mm. they made Skyrim as well. They'd have had mm. to like use that same code like straight away. Like yeah, so they gave all the spot. NPCs wants and desires, and all they wanted was booze and murder people just for the booze. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Mind you, even when I'm playing Assassin's Creed, you're going down the road sometimes, and all of a sudden there's like a couple of soldiers fighting some random civilians for no reason. Mm. And you're like, oh, what's going on here then? <laughs> He's probably going to been on a murderous rampage. The soldiers, the, the villains are probably carrying booze or yeah. something. Has anyone ever seen that film with, oh, is it Ryan Gosling? I haven't, I know which one you're on about. Not Ryan Gosling, who's the other one? The one who's Deadpool? <laughs> yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, that's, that's it. Shit. He plays an NPC character in this sort of game. And Every um, man is. Yeah. I, I, what, I, I started watching it's that. It's really good, man. I... I fell asleep so I watched, start watching it late at night but I will want to watch the rest of it at some point yeah it's really good yeah he realises doesn't he yeah I yeah. guess it's kind of like that mm. same he has sort of thing. a bit of consciousness <laughs> yeah. about it he's like ah oh, I can do fucking anything <laughs> woohoo do you think the AI here, though, that they've had to dumb down, realise that booze is something that people wanted because of it being programmed, or have they just got their own artificial intelligence and just gravitated towards that? I don't that? know. Yeah, that is. Burn all copies of the game! <laughs> <laughs> if you have a copy of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, bring it to my garden and we will burn them all. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to another AI story. Chess robot grabs and breaks finger of seven-year-old opponent. Savage. Moscow incident occurred because child, quote, violated safety rules by taking his turn too quickly, says official. Yeah, more like this Russian robot's <laughs> designed to break fingers. Yeah. Plus, we've got a torture bot that learned to play chess. Last week, according to Russian media outlets, a chess-playing robot, apparently unsettled by the quick responses of a seven-year-old boy, unceremoniously grabbed and broke his finger during a match at the Moscow Open. See, it's starting. Uh, it's starting. They're breaking kids' fingers. What's next? Yeah. What's next, guys? Taking over the world, firing the nukes. The president of the Moscow Chess Federation said, This is, of course, bad. <laughs> well, well done. Well done. <laughs> I, I'll give you a cut to the ball, half round of applause. There are certain safety rules and the child apparently violated them. When he made his move, he did not realise he first had to wait. This is an extremely rare case, the first I can recall, he added. Mm. Well, the, the robot board. supplies don't have to think again, apparently. Mm. Why don't they make it <coughs> the robot so it can just literally pinch the piece and put it down and not actually break fingers <laughs> in the first place? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because that makes the Russian children tougher, Claire. <laughs> they have their fingers broken all the time by chess robots. That makes them smart and tough. That little kid is going to be the John Connor. <laughs> yeah. He's got yeah. the lifelong vendetta against oh, the robots. So when they, John O'Connorovich. <laughs> when, they, when they rise up, that's it. He, he's going to be the first one yeah. in line like that. Right. I've been waiting for this moment. Look at my bent finger. From when I was six. Yep. Yeah. Seven or whatever. John O'Connorski? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John O'Connorski. Konoskovich. Ooh, Konoskovich. John o John Konoskovich. John O'Konoskovich. John O'Konoskovich. <laughs> there we go. John O'Konoskovich. They never gave us a child's name. What if it's that? Christopher, apparently. Uh, well, Christopher Konoskovich. Well, we can't trust the Russian media, yeah. can we? 
<laughs> and they say the incident was a coincidence and the robot was absolutely safe. Well, clearly not. Uh, this has it's never not. happened. This has never happened before there are such accidents. I wish the boy good health. It's never <laughs> happened before in the three times it was used. Mm. Apart from that first time when we used it and it ripped the child's head off. <laughs> when we put that, that we, we fixed that problem. We fixed that problem. <laughs> And then that second time when it went for the nuclear codes and we only just managed to shut it down. So in this case, breaking a boy's finger is absolutely a massive step towards the right direction. <laughs> we seem to have done this one down quite well. Apparently some guy called Robot... I mean, Robert Williams, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Robot <laughs> Williams. <laughs> If he was called Robert Williams and he died because of a robot, that would have been fantastic. Yeah. She was the first crushed to death by the arm of a one ton like, robot. If you're from a deep enough south in America, you can call him Robert. <laughs> robot Williams? <laughs> robot killed him! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, he's crushed to death by the arm of a one-ton robot on Ford's Michigan production line in 1979. A one-ton robot's not that heavy, though. I mean, my folk have trucks heavier than that. And robots using medical surgery are held responsible for the deaths of 144 people between 2008 and 2013. Well, stop using them, then! <laughs> stop using the robot surgeons! <laughs> well, that will be the future one day, won't it? However, generally, it's human Goodbye. error. It is the most frequent oh, well, cause. Most recently, Elaine Hasberg was killed by an autonomous car that hit the 49-year-old at 40 mile per hour as she was crossing yeah, the road that, yeah. in Temp, Arizona. I think there's always going to be accidents with this stuff, isn't there? Yeah. Be safe than humans. Less accidents than of course there is. Human ever. How many yeah. car deaths a fucking year in this country? <laughs> well, it's not, even, it's not even that. It's other accidents. <laughs> One of the lorry drivers at work was telling me this week about a guy who works for the same company that used to have a little camping stove, a little gas stove he kept in the cab. Because obviously he had to stay overnight and stuff, so he'd cook himself up some breakfast mm. in the morning. He thinks this gas can is empty, so he throws it in the other, opposite footwell. Doesn't think about it. Has the window, he is going along, doesn't bother, you know. Gets to his destination, he lights a fag. This thing's been leaking. Only a little bit, but it's been leaking. Blows the fucking windscreen out, the <laughs> side windows, the roof goes up. He lights his fag, fortunately, literally, as he's literally disembarking and stepping down out of it. Blows him back six foot. He lands on the ground. Cam's a smoking wreck. What are you going to tell the boss? We won't have that with AI cams, will you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you in the front? I guess so. <laughs> you know, the, the, the robots are going to smoke. Unless you make them completely realistic. <laughs> and they get a red arm on the one one side. And they're smoking a fag. <laughs> and they occasionally no murder a prostitute. In, in the car whatsoever? <laughs> hmm? You think there's going to be no human element in the car whatsoever? Or I, I think eventually, yeah. They're going to be Johnny Cabs. Wow. Eventually, because if, if you can produce an AI car that no one needs a licence to operate, you just step into. You don't need to pay somebody, do you? It's automated. Well, you, 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 yeah, you, that's one of the biggest costs, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you got to pay the driver. Well, the yeah. drivers need to sleep. They can't drive 24-7. If you're just paying for the fuel. Yeah. Whatever, well, they're solar-powered. Yeah, they're solar-powered. They don't even need that. Just maintenance. There'd always be a charge, though, wouldn't there? There'd always be a charge, which, I mean... Close to zero. All, you, all you'd have to do is cover maintenance, wouldn't you? Yeah. We've covered this in the Internet of Things. Yeah. Our episodes we did early on. Yeah, check that out. But yeah, as I say, you, all you're looking at is maintenance and upkeep. Changing the tyres, upgrading the AI. Which means the uh, cost of a tyre would be like £700 a piece. Like just free standard kind of 50 quid tyre now. They'd charge you the earth. Why? Because, because there's less... There's, you're not making money elsewhere with them, are you? Well, no, you still... Let's say that no one needs a personal car anymore. You just call one of these Johnny Cabs. You know, there might be a couple of thousand or three, four thousand trying to rent Telford every day. However many... In our hometown Telford, however many cars there are at any one point in the day on the roads. I mean, there's, what, 200,000 people in Telford. Let's say there's... At any one time, there's, what, 10, 20,000 cars on the go at any one time. There wouldn't be buzzes. 
So yeah, you can yeah, have yeah, these yeah. Johnny Cabs? Buzzes. Or you can have Johnny Buses. Buses. Is that what bees make? Yeah, yeah, bees Johnny Buses, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just think now, how often do you use your car? Every day. Yeah, but how for how long? Not very long. Not very long, is it? No. Most of the time, 95% of the time, stood on the driveway doing nothing. Waste yeah. of resources. Waste of space? Yeah. Mm. Car parks, massive yeah. waste of space. If you get a, a, a never ending series yeah. of these solar powered Johnny cabs on a loop, which will all be AI driven, you know, you book it on an app on your phone, it turns up, this is number. Oh, yeah, like a normal well, taxi. Like yeah. a normal taxi. <laughs> but this isn't a driver, yeah. This is a and driver. You just pay the fuel cost. Well, yeah, you, solar powered, you don't even need that. Yeah, you probably have a. That's also good. They get you off for something. You pay for you pay. It's free in this world. You pay a nominal fee for maintenance, upkeep, yeah. and upgrades, and things like that. Is the tires have got to be changed, Research wear and tear on parts. Yeah. Johnny's got to be replaced. After Johnny's got to be upgraded. Someone's going to be. <laughs> someone would have tried to fuck the Johnny AI mannequin <laughs> in the front. He's going to be cleaned as well, haven't they? Well, there'll be a, a bit of puke on the back of his neck and things yeah. like that. I be hoping that you wouldn't have any access to the driver whatsoever, it, you know. Well, you might need to in an emergency. I don't know. It'll sort itself out. Should we move on? Yep. Yeah. Last one. Hmm. And finally, Dad hasn't stopped farting since eating ham roll at Christmas market five years ago. <laughs> well, you know what? That's a good excuse as any. So, yeah, yeah. The reason my farts stink so bad is I ate this Christmas roll, I ate this ham at Christmas market. Five years ago. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. Tyrone Prades claims he has suffered life-changing problems since eating a festive ham hock bap at the Frankfurt Christmas Market in Birmingham. Birmingham! In 2017. The company denies blame. So, a dad who claims he has had an embarrassing chronic flatulence since eating the ham roll five years ago is suing for over two hundred thousand pounds. Is he having a laugh? <laughs> is he having a laugh? <laughs> so the forty six year old says he suffers from severe tummy problems he he sorry, he suffered from severe tummy problems within a day and was bed bound for five weeks afterwards and ill for months. Mr. Prade says he'd been left permanently affected by embarrassing flatulence as well as other issues, including a belly that makes churning noises so loud they keep him awake at night. I once farted myself asleep. Away. Uh, awake. Awake, <laughs> awake even. <laughs> I once farted myself, farted myself asleep as well. You gassed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I have farted so loud that I woke myself up. <laughs> once. That's amazing. It was magnificent. <laughs> it genuinely was magnificent. So he uh, claimed that he um, contracted salmonella from the bat, and this is why he's trying to sue them for two hundred thousand yep. pounds. However, the company denies blame and claims there is no salmonella bacteria at the ham hock stall. According to documents from the High Court in London, Mr. Parades of Chippenham, Wits, Wiltshire. Wilt, Wiltshire, sorry, went to the market with his wife and children in December, two thousand and seventeen. Within 24 hours, he was ill, suffering stomach cramps, fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stated his lawyer. He was bed-bound for weeks, ill for months. The claimant began to return to life as normal during 2019, but to continue to feel lethargic and suffer from bouts of diarrhea and similar complaints, he says. Sounds like he's got an um, IBS to me. Mm. Yeah. Maybe the hammerhock joint bacon bat bought it on? Could have been like a trigger, couldn't it? Mm. Could have been. But at the same time, you know, does it happen, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's not much more. Maybe that was just the last thing the he ate for his IBS really kicked in. Well, they found bacteria. E. coli was found in a knife used to cut the meat. Ooh. So, yes, following Public Health England investigation, two cases of salmonella were confirmed as originating from a stall between the 9th and the 11th of December 2017. So if he was there on the 9th, mm -hmm. yeah. so E. coli bacteria was found on a knife, on a knife that was used to cut cooked meat and an unsatisfactory level of enterobacteriae, what? Yeah. 
whatever. The family bacteria containing both E. coli and salmonella was found. Yeah, so, so yeah. So he's definitely got a case, hasn't he? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't eat pork baps at Christmas parties. Well, you know, my general rule of thumb is not eat things like that from stalls. But first, if I thought he was I'd eat beef. The piss. Mm. I'd eat beef products because beef's pretty fucking hardy, to be fair. Pork, no. Mm. Chicken, meh. Again, it's a bit dodgy. But yeah, beef, no problem. You can't go wrong with a burger, can you? No, I see. Can't really fuck a burger. Even or a rat burger. You, you know demolition I mean? man, of course, yeah. You know, you know, I eat a rat burger. Nah, you know that typical kind of festival burger. Probably give you rat burgers, the ones you get from body the stores. Yeah, body air festivals. Yeah, festivals. Yeah, that typical burger van burger that just tastes like pap. <laughs> you know what? Usually the shop <laughs> in Wolverhampton, but it's face. always good because you're drunk and you need food. Yeah, you know, like, I don't care what it tastes oh. like. It's fucking great. There was this shop in Wolverhampton called King Kebab. Right, it was next to the planet. I was going to say that's that's the one next to the planet, and yeah. it does do good fucking kebab as well. Yeah, I've only ever the double cheeseburger, and I've never figured out what meat that burger was. But it was good. It was great. It was phenomenal. Mm. But it wasn't beef. <laughs> it was probably horse and fucking donkey. Probably fucking Alsatian, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of cat. Who Everything. knows? But you know what? He gave me a free one one night with the one I paid for. Nice. And I was like, sweet. I ate them both. There's not much more meat to that last one. No more meat on them bones. Hey. We'll leave that one there. Is that the punk crone? Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's what I was kind of going for it, but he stole it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that bombshell then. Oh, that bombshell. I'm Ben. I'm the king of puns. Don't name me Stan. That's a Rose West. Uh-huh. No. I mean, Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. And I've been Claire. Watch out for them seagulls. And I've been Pete. Don't eat pork off dodgy fucking stalls and off. Don't eat pork. <laughs> I don't eat pork behind the glory hole either. <laughs> pork swords. No, thank you. <laughs>